everybody, this is Steve with Smitty's Fly Box. We're going to tie a tilt wing drake. This is a pretty cool style of fly. It's like a parachute style. I've been intrigued with it for a while, so I was excited to uh, do it for our intermediate tying box. So let's give it a go. Um, we're using Orientsen dry fly hooks. We're going we're gonna to do a barbless dry fly hook. Um, and we're going to use Semperfly dot thread. So let's start our thread just right there in the uh, middle of the hook. And I'm not going to um, tie off I'm not going to snip off that tag in. Let's actually keep that and we're going to tie that down right on top of the hook all the way back to the end of our hook shank. We're going to use that to split the tail. So for the tail I'm going to use I'm sending some whiting CDL fibers. I've been using that feather, but really cool stuff. Notice the natural uh, barring to it, and they're very long, stiff, so they make great dry fly tails. Um, also tails for like pertigones. I'm going to just try to get myself a little clump there. Okay, so I've just got about three of those, three or four of those hackle barbs there. and I want that to be about the length of the hook shank. So once I have that measurement, I can switch to my left hand. And I'm just going to lay those butt ends just on the side there and just try to roll those right up on top. And then let's just tie those down right back to the end of our hook shank right there. And let's take our thread back somewhere up there in the middle. So that would make a good tail just like that. But let's take this thread that I let, left there and I can bring it up through those, that clump and try to split those up and see how they flare a little bit. And that gets those out there so they look a little more natural. Once I have that how I like it, I can tie that off. And now we can snip off the excess. I got one stray there that's just not cooperating. I'm not going to worry too much about him. But now I've got a splayed out tail there. For the rib, I'm going to use some uni cord, and let's just try to lay that along the side of the hook and tie that down all the way back to the back. Let's just let that hang there, and now I can dub the body forward. So I'm going to try to build a tapered body. all the way up to two-thirds up the hook shank. So let's add just a little bit more. Okay, now we can uh, rib with the yellow rib. Now if yours frays out a little bit, you may need to spin it or twist it tightly. And then I can just build that little ribbing through that dubbing. It gives it kind of that natural yellow once I'm there, I can hold it with my right hand, drop my thread over with my left hand, and now I can snip off the excess. Let's tie down that floss so it's nice and secure in there. All right, now it's a good spot to tie in our grizzly hackle. So I've just got some saddle hackle here. And what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna prepare this. I like to just trim those butts down a little bit and give myself plenty of room there. That keeps that hackle from slipping out and then I can tie that in right there. And I want that pretty much laying just like that right on top, best I can. All right, now let's just continue dubbing up towards the eye and continue on with our tapered body. So I don't need much here. I'm just going to uh, really cover up that front part of the the hook and just continue to create that taper. Now I want to keep the eye of the hook just behind the eye free. So let's come right back there like that. All right, now we're ready for the elk hair. Done is just stacked up some elk hair and I'm using about the same amount as I would use on like an elk hair caddis. So I want those tips to extend just past the uh, bend of the hook there to create that mayfly wing. Once I have that, I'm going to tie it in right on top of that dubbing right there and I'm just going to make 
two or three really good turns just to secure that in. All right, now what I'm gonna attempt to do is I'm gonna take my thread around everything. So this is a little tricky. So let's pull our hackle up. Come up underneath there. Come in front. Underneath. And what I'm doing is just kind of gathering everything like, like I would a parachute fly. So all I need is a couple of good turns like that. And I should be right back to right there. All right, now I need to take my thread up here to the, uh, again, the eye of the hook. So I might have a few little th spots where you can see my thread shining through. Not a huge deal, but um, when I'm gonna advance my thread, I'm gonna just add a little bit of dubbing, just a little tiny bit, really to cover my thread wrap, so. So let's come in right here, pull everything back. A couple turns right there. And we should end up right there behind the eye of the hook. All right, now I'm ready to wrap this uh, hackle and I'm gonna try to, let's go under everything. And really all I need is a couple of good turns like so. And now I need to tie that off right there. So one little thing that I like to do is I like to just hold my hack like that and just strip a small little section of the stem. So I got a little section there that is exposed. And the idea is now when I come around on the last turn and I come right there, I basically just have the stem. That makes it a little easier to tie off. So now I can come over the stem and over the hook, but I can avoid all those hackle barbs. And it's a little easier to tie off that hackle. All I need is a couple of turns there. Now I'm just gonna carefully pull everything back and just build a little head. And that actually folds over that uh, hackle like that. And then I can come in here and snip that off nice and clean and ready to whip finish. So we'll whip finish right up underneath everything again. Just come in here really tight, trying to avoid any of those hackle barbs. We'll hit that with a little head cement in there really fine with the needle. And we should be good to go now. We've manhandled that hackle a little bit, but let's uh, clip off this the butt ends. It's a little tricky because I got to separate the butts from the tips. So it's not as hard as it looks. If you just kind of take both ends like that, you can start to separate them like that. All right, once I have that, I'm going to just hold it right there and come in here nice and tight with the front. And then I can trim down the excess right there and get any strays. Get that uh, looking how I want. And there's the uh, 